Hey guys, welcome back to another video here on Toned In Entertainment where we love pop culture. Today, it's time for some more comic book reviews as I continue on with my series called First Impressions where I look at this week's issue number ones that I found interesting and see how much of an impression they made and see if they're worth continuing on with. Now this week I found three comics of interest and I'm gonna kick it off with a new one from DC called Refrigerator Full of Heads. Now before I go any further, while this is a DC comic, the art here by Tom Fowler and colors by Bill Crabtree can get pretty intense and brutal. Now as far as the story goes, by Rio Yores, he's going to take us on a journey to Brony Island, Maine in July of 1984, where we're going to meet lovebirds Arlene and Cal. While being shown around the house that they'll be staying in, they are warned about two things in this town, bikers and sharks. But this couple, they seem to be the type that will stay out of trouble, as their reason for being here is not for vacation reasons, but so that Arlene can have some peace and quiet while she finishes writing up her novel, and Cal is essentially there for moral support. In the opening pages of this issue, we are taken back just eight months prior, where we see some crooks letting nothing get in their way in order to get their hands on a powerful weapon called the Dagger of Fenrir, where they will learn that the urban legends of its power seem to be true. Now, as for Cal and Arlene, their trip of peace and quiet will not last very long as Cal gets himself into some trouble with some bikers that will have him making a run and jump for his life. But in doing so, he comes across a glowing object in the ocean. Now, when he tells Arlene about this glowing object, it appears that these two might have come for more than what they have been upfront about. Now, on a scale of one to 10, I'm gonna give issue number one of Refrigerator Full of Heads a seven out of 10. I thought issue one was pretty solid and definitely spiked my interest in coming back for more to see just what the ramifications for using the dagger of Fenrir are because as we are teased at the end, just because you behead something, that doesn't mean it's dead. Next up, we have a series from Dynamite Comics with Purgatory, issue number one. Now I know the character Purgatory is not a new character. However, for me, I have not read anything with this character. So going into this issue, I'm completely cold. Unfortunately though, after reading this issue, there is no spark that will really draw me back into coming back for more. Now on my scale, if I give an issue a five out of 10, that means it was straight average. It wasn't neither good nor bad. And I'm gonna give Purgatory issue number one, a five out of 10. Now there are some interesting concepts here in this issue written by Ray Foxwith, most notably how the group of four witches use the character of Sarah to manipulate Purgatory being my personal favorite. The art is done by Alvaro Ceresica and the colors by Salvatore Ayali, and they are solid throughout with the manipulation scenes also being the standout here. Now while I did give this issue a five, it doesn't mean that it was bad by any means. It just did nothing to hook me to really want me to come back for more more. Next up, we have a Comixology original with Night of the Ghoul, issue number one. The story in Night of the Ghoul takes us out to the California desert at what looks like some type of compound. A man named Forrest Inman comes with his son Orson and they tell the staff that they are here to see a man named Mr. Patrick about insurance matters. Now, since Mr. Patrick is a very sick man, when Forrest goes in to see him, he's told he only has 20 minutes with him. In that very short time, we will learn that Mr. Inman is no insurance rep and Mr. Patrick is definitely not who he says he is, as we find out he was a great writer and director going by the name T.F. Merritt. Now, why Mr. Inman has come to him is because he has uncovered a piece of his film he made about the ghoul that never got to see the light of day, and he wants to discuss it with him. But for Mr. Inman, just like Mr. Merritt's movie, him and his son might never see another light of day as well. Now, on a scale of one to 10, I'm giving issue number one of Night of the Ghoul an eight out of 10, as this was my favorite first impression this week. Scott Snyder's writing and storytelling is once again really good in another new series where he tells just enough of a story to keep me interested throughout, but also dangles enough carrots along the way to make me really wanna come back for more. 
In addition to the story, I also really enjoy the art by Francesco Francavilla. The colors he uses throughout really fit the theme of this book, with the standout piece being how he shows just how much of a disarray the film is by T.F. Merritt. All right, guys, well, that's going to wrap up this episode of First Impressions. Now, out of these three comics, did you read any of them? And if you did, what are your thoughts? Comment down below. Now, while these were the three series I was interested in taking a look at, I do know there were other number one issues released this week. And if I missed any good ones, comment down below so I can go and check those out. All right, guys, if you like comic book reviews like this and all things pop culture, make sure you stay tuned in here to Toned In Entertainment for future videos. Subscribe to the channel. Do it, go now, do it now.